I'm Conan Gasquay with Children's of Alabama. Thanks so much for joining us today for this roundtable discussion talking about two very important topics for today's youth, vaping and tobacco. These can certainly be very dangerous activities for children and teenagers, not to mention adults. We have a couple experts from here at Children's of Alabama to talk about this. Robin Gers, Certified Tobacco Treatment Specialist here at Children's, and also Ann Slattery, Director of the Alabama Poison Information Center here at Children's. Guys, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. So these are obviously very important topics year round, but the specific reason we're talking about them right now is because we have a very big event coming up, the Great American Smokeout. It's the third Thursday of, of November every year. Uh, so a great time to kind of just reiterate some of the advice for parents and children and teenagers that we have out there. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Robin, let me get you to tell me what the Great American Smokeout is all about and what some of the goals are. We really just want to encourage people to consider quitting smoking. And we know quitting smoking is really hard uh, for some people. It takes um, many tries, but on November the 17th of this year, so that's just in a few days, we um, want to encourage people to quit for 24 hours. So choosing to quit, putting the cigarettes away, um, ashtrays away, all smoking. Um, and we can also think about quitting vaping as well. Um, but we think that just for one day, people all across the country can commit to quitting. And we hope that that one day can also lead to um, a long-term quit. So it will take some time, but it's a, it's a beginning place. And we love to offer this uh, to our parents and our grandparents. Good way to start. Uh, you know, after all, if you're going to quit, you have to pick a day that you're going to start quitting. And maybe that's a good way to start is on the Great American Smokeout. Uh, of course, one of the reasons that it is important to quit is because of how dangerous and toxic uh, tobacco and, and many of the chemicals used in vaping are. And you're an expert on poison. Can you talk a little bit about tobacco specifically from a poison standpoint and what it can do to the body of a child or a teen uh, who is utilizing a tobacco product? As far as tobacco, the major problem in like cigarettes or children that might ingest cigarette butts or that might get a hold of snuff or chewing tobacco or those little pouches is the nicotine. Nicotine is very toxic. Um, one cigarette or three butts or one pouch or one pinch of snuff or chewing tobacco is potentially life-threatening and it can cause it starts off with nausea vomiting headache tremors you, they're sweating their heart races they become pale their blood pressure increases they could have seizures and that's like that's the the part where it kind of hypes them up then they end up having confusion and weakness and the heart rate starts dropping, the blood pressure starts dropping and they can have uh, respiratory muscle paralysis and it can be uh, fatal. Certainly a lot of scary stuff uh, that can happen there. But of course, uh, Robin, it, it can also have an effect on children and teens when maybe their parents or um, smoking tobacco. Can you talk a little bit about the difference between secondhand smoke and thirdhand smoke and the effects that that can have? Yes, and there's no safe level of exposure to secondhand or thirdhand smoke. Um, we know that secondhand smoke kills over 750 non-smoking Alabamians each year. And children exposed to secondhand smoke are at a greater uh, risk for um, SIDS, as well as acute respiratory infections, um, ear problems, um, severe asthma, and reduced lung function. So that is um, caused by secondhand smoke exposure, which basically means a child is breathing in either the smoke caused by the cigarette or the smoke that's exhaled from the one that's smoking around them. We know that our children are incredibly vulnerable. They don't have the choice at their age to get away from smoke. So it's essential that our parents, our um, caregivers, and our grandparents understand just how harmful this smoke exposure is. So then the difference um, then in second and third hand smoke exposure, the third hand exposure is the residue that's left from smoke. 
and that residue, it might look like it disappears in the air, but it actually has to fall and it finds a landing place. And that's usually on the person who's smoking's um, skin, on their clothing, their hair, any furniture that's around um, in the car, also on the floor. And then um, where the harm happens is uh, the child or uh, the baby then is either cuddled by a parent or grandparent who's been smoking, or a toddler may be crawling around on the ground and touches the floor or uh, crawls up you know, in the car seat and is touching a fabric that has that residue on it. So we know that that can be ingested, just like um, Anne's talked about the residue, but also um, it's breathed in. So it almost feels like if you are smoking around your child or your grandchild, um, it's like your child is also smoking, taking up all those harmful chemicals um, that Anne has just spoken about. So for all of those reasons, we really want to encourage people to know the harms and then make that really essential decision to quit for the benefit of your child in addition to your own health benefit. And I guess there's also the possibility if uh, you are vaping and you have children that a child could pick up that e-cigarette and then use it themselves and cause harm to themselves directly like that. And, and I, how much of a concern is that for you being a poison expert that that could happen to a very young child? Um, it's extremely important. We get that call frequently. Um, if they, children mimic their parents. That's just what they do. If you're sweeping, your child wants a broom. Then they turn 14 and they don't want the broom. But anyway, when they're two, they, they want to sweep like mom. And so they'll pick up that vape. And we get that call all the time. And children less than two who will take a hit because they've seen their parents do it. Now, when you talk about the vape liquid, it is very dangerous. If you are using a refillable type product, you have to understand that liquid nicotine absorbs through the skin, it absorbs by ingestion, and it also can absorb through the eye, okay? So you don't want this liquid to get anywhere, you know? It's, it's a little bit different than regular smoking where it's really just the lungs and the skin. It's not like unless they eat the cigarette butts that they're gonna be eating it, but anyway, it's all harmful. And you're looking at a product that, let's say you do your own refilling of the vape cartridge um, and you have bottles and they're like 0.6 to 3.6%. Well, that would mean less than a fourth of a teaspoon of the 0.6 could be potentially fatal and two to three drops of the 3.6. That is how toxic it is. Really scary stuff, and I, I guess that just underscores the importance of, of making sure that you're not doing it all, uh, you, you know, vaping or smoking, anything like that. Robin, what is your message to parents uh, about trying to keep their kids safe by making sure they don't have any of those products in the house? Right. So um, ideally, the key is not to be smoking anywhere near or around where your children are or um, the locations where they frequent that makes it tough for someone who, who wants to smoke uh, and you have children. Um, ideally, we would suggest that you smoke outside far away and that you wear some type of smoking shirt that can be taken off. And then once you come back in, um, make sure to wash your hands, take the shirt off. Um, that helps some, it, it can help some. It's really important to know in a lot of living situations, um, let's say if someone's living in an apartment, we know that people smoke, like even if no one smokes in your particular apartment, that that smoke can travel through the air ducts. It can travel under um, doors. Um, so there's really, um, you know, that's, that's a whole nother situation. If you have a child with asthma or you're, uh, you know, and have a newborn, um, you know, that's something that you really seriously want to consider that type of smoke exposure. Um, but key really is making sure that you commit to a smoke-free home and car. And we're also going to include vaping. So let's just say committing to a smoke and a vape-free car and home will greatly reduce the chances of your children um, coming in contact with some of these products that Anne's speaking about. 
um, but then also coming in, in contact with the um, second and third hand exposure. So quitting, keeping a smoke free, a vape free home, and then having a conversation with your family members that might be smoking or vaping and helping them try to understand um, your concern for your child's health and that really their habits greatly can um, positively affect uh, the children at, when they quit and when they um, commit to not smoking or vaping around them and doing those things that, that I just mentioned. And quitting, I know, of course, is, is very, very challenging. Uh, so the best thing, I guess, is to not get started in the first place. But for people who already are using these products, adults who have kids in their home, do you feel like that's sort of a good way to get started on the road toward quitting is by making sure while you're in that process of quitting that you're staying outside and using that smoking clothing like you were talking about uh, while you're in that process and then work toward quitting? Yes, that, that can help. Um, and I would just say, um, you know, the commitment to quit, maybe someone feels at this moment that it's time and they're ready to commit. Maybe they've tried in the past and it, ha and it hasn't, you know, continued, but um, it's never too late. Um, it's time, especially around the Great American Smokeout, to consider again your reasons for wanting to quit. And we really feel like our children are, um, are the key. Like we, we can consider quitting for their benefit. Um, so some of the keys to quitting and staying quitting um, are getting support, making sure you have a good network of friends or at least just one person you can talk to. Um, some counseling definitely helps. Um, so these are just some uh, evidence-based um, suggestions that have shown true benefits for quitting and staying quit. Um, also the use of nicotine replacement therapy. So patches as, um, as a, a long-term like 24 hour um, dosing of safe nicotine to your body to help you as you are trying to change your behavioral patterns and your schedule throughout the day that's normally included smoking. Um, the patch keeps that level at a steady uh, place while you can change your activities, um, find healthy uh, replacements for smoking a cigarette. But then also a lot of our parents and grandparents have found it helpful to have either the nicotine gum or the lozenges handy for when they have a strong urge and feel the need to want to smoke even though they have the patch on. So the dual use of nicotine replacement therapy is really helpful. And then, um, so we talked about the counseling and then the support and uh, the nicotine replacement therapy. So those are just some suggestions that I would um, throw out there. And it could be that maybe you've tried in the past to quit and maybe just tried to go cold turkey. It's good to know that very few people are able to quit cold turkey, mainly because smoking includes, um, you know, I think behavior, it includes um, also just your body's dependence on nicotine and then the need for support. So the social aspect, um, when we look at all of those together and the full person, um, it just feels like um, that's a good way to, to quit and stay quit as opposed to going the cold turkey method. And I know when we talk about quitting, we, it, the, probably the first thing that comes to people's mind is quitting smoking cigarettes or quitting e-cigarettes, but there's a lot of different products out there. And, and I know one you've talked about before, is the pouches. Can you, can you explain what these are and uh, the damage that they can do? It is a little powder of uh, nicotine and you put it in your mouth and it's supposedly a spitless like chewing tobacco, but it's really just a pouch and it contains six milligrams of nicotine. So one pouch is uh, toxic for a child. How do you sum up how, how dangerous all these different methods of consuming tobacco or e-cigarettes are uh, from a perspective of toxicity and, and what they can do to a child? Well, as we talked about earlier, it can be life-threatening. They can become agitated and then somnolent. I mean, first you have the agitation, then you start having the respiratory depression. It can be harmful there. We can have nausea, vomiting, 
all kinds of symptoms. They can have seizures. So it can be very dangerous. And then in some of those cartridges, we don't know exactly um, what's in all of them. And some of them that are illicit, like for teenagers might get a hold of the have THC or CBD or Delta A in them. They might also have vitamin E oil, which is also very toxic to your lungs. And then your regular e-cigarettes have propylene glycol, propylene glycol in them. And upon heating it, it can become a carcinogenic. So there are many chemicals besides the nicotine that they're being exposed to. Certainly a lot of reasons to quit when you think about how dangerous these products can be. Robin, uh, for people who are, who are looking for more information, more resources on, you know, really any of this, how to talk to their kids about it, how to quit themselves, do you, do you have any, uh, uh, maybe a couple resources that you would recommend that they look at? I do. I'm so glad you asked that um, because um, there is support there for anyone at whatever stage they are uh, with their um, tobacco use, with their nicotine addiction, and um, it's never too late to quit. So um, a couple of things, I really love um, the Truth Initiative is a nonprofit that has a program called Become an X. And I would suggest you go to www.becomeanex.org they provide support for anyone who wants to quit smoking, quit vaping, quit um, smokeless tobacco, as well as support for parents whose teens are trying to quit vaping. So again, that's www.becomeanx.org. And then um, a wonderful app um, that you can get on your smartphone is called Quit Start. And that, um, it's provided by smokefree.gov. Again, it's a wonderful app for anyone that likes um, to have that type of support um, on their phone. And then a wonderful um, text quitting program for smoking is to text the word quit, Q-U-I-T, to 47848. Um, and then lastly, I know Anne's talking a lot about vaping and we really support our Alabama young people in quitting um, this addiction. If, if you feel like you have a teen or maybe a teen's listening that would like help quitting, um, they can text um, vape free AL to 88709. And all of these programs are confidential and uh, really just uh, geared toward the individual. This particular um, texting program is, um, it allows you to put in you know, what type of um, device you're vaping and how often, and then just get the support you need, like maybe handling peer pressure or if you have certain triggers. Um, and that is typically kind of the support one gets um, when they are addicted to nicotine, trying to understand what, uh, their reason for vaping or smoking is, and then how to um, add something healthy into that routine and schedule while they're taking that, um, that smoking or that vaping away. So those are great resources, and I hope um, everyone will feel um, compelled, especially around the Great American Smoke Out, to, uh, to go ahead and just do it, and um, your health will benefit so much, as well as all the children and um, and the family members that are surrounding you. Certainly a lot of reasons uh, not to start uh, getting involved in any of these activities and to quit if you already are involved in this. Once again, Ann Slattery and Robin Gers with the latest on vaping and e-cigarette use, tobacco use. Guys, thanks so much for your time. And for more information, you can go to childrensal.org.